is Dr. Thomas Manton. Anaitwa Daktari Thomas Manton. He's a global prophet. Ani nabii wa kimataifa. Maybe you've come across his uh, broadcasts. Pengine umekutana na mahubiri yake. He has been speaking over this nation. Amekuwa ananenea nchi hii for many years now over 24 years. Kwa miaka mingi zaidi ya 24. And this is our day today. Na hii ni siku yetu leo. That is here. Ya kwamba yupo mahali hapa. Our prayer Maombi yetu is the Holy Spirit. Ni kwamba Roho Mtakatifu to use his lips. Akatumie kinywa chake and clear his will. Na kutangaza mapenzi yake. So Let's welcome him in the name of Jesus. Baba tumkaribisha katika jina la Yesu. To come and minister. Ili akaweze kutuhudumia the mind of the Father. God himself is very serious about when people cut covenant with him. He looks at people's hearts and see how much they want to commit to him. Many people just want to get blessed, but blessed for what? I want to tell you from the first moment here that if you don't want to work, neither should you eat. If you work very well and hard, you should eat the good of the land. Someone say praise the Lord. Everybody says they want things, but are they willing to do what it takes to get a lot? This is the issue now. If you want to have a great organization, you want to be great, uh, you know, in the earth, you're going to have to apply yourself with great diligence. And um, God is watching people. He's always, God is always looking for someone whose heart is perfect toward him. He's always looking for someone that is ready to commit and sell out everything to him. People say they want the miracle working power. You know, we don't see it very much. Miracles. The Lord's my a friend of mine in London, a prophet friend of mine wrote a, a post this morning and he sent me the link. It says if you want to have a miracle ministry, you want the miracle anointing, pay the price. So I wrote back, yes indeed, well said. Pay the price. If you can pay the price, that it takes to get something you will surely have it and the price is what it's consecration and you're talking about spiritual things it's consecration and all of that but in 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 the business world it's work but just not hard work it's smart work and some people work very hard all day but they don't um they don't work smart they're working on a low paying thing when you work with your mind to create an environment for people in the business community of your own, a lot of money will flow there. Let me tell you something about money. Money chases good ideas. God can give you one idea that can make you a multi-millionaire, even a multi-billionaire. He's done it for me. <laughs> I tell you. God knows who belongs to him. And who doesn't? Many people say, Lord, Lord. Remember those guys in Matthew 7. Lord, didn't we preach in your name? Prophesy in your name. Ha. Didn't we cast out devils ha, in your name? Ha. Some people even change the name of God and Jesus. Jesus' name is now Jesus. Uh, oh, God. Uh, add the U-H at the end of the name. Jesus. Uh, God. Uh. It's okay. I have a good friend that does that. He's a great preacher. And he's a good man. One particular friend of mine. But you could, there were people that did all of that. And the Lord said, I don't know you. Could you imagine? But the Lord is looking for workers. Can I, can I preach? Can I say what God wants me to say? If you work well in anything you put your hand to you will prosper not just because of the mercy of God but because of the reward system of God he will reward those that are diligent hello if you want to get a lot in life 
Be diligent, what? Not just in anything, because you could be diligent in something and not get a lot from it. You could be the right person in the wrong place and not get blessed because you're, you're in the wrong thing. It's almost possible, I say this in a cheeky kind of way, in a funny kind of way, it's almost possible for you to be the wrong person in the right place and get a benefit more than being the right person in the wrong place. Because if you're the right person in the wrong place, uh, people won't appreciate you. Number one principle, again, Jesus always went where he was celebrated. And that's where the miracles happened. The times when he went to the place where he was disrespected or merely just tolerated, they pushed him away with their disrespect. And the Holy Spirit said, I will not move here, son. You better find another place. Lift your hands. Say, Father, put me in the right place with the right people at the right time for the right reason, doing the right thing. Ha, 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 ha. Say it fast. Put Father in Jesus' name. Come on, say it. Father in Jesus' name. Put me in the right place with the right people at the right time, doing the right thing, and I will succeed, and I'll be blessed. That's how it works. Look at your neighbor and say, that's how it works. If I only came to say that, I've helped your life. If you could remember that and work with that every day, you will begin to come out of poverty. Lift your hands. You can't live poor if you're doing big things for a good reason in a good way. Things will begin to happen. You could be a thousandaire one day and a millionaire the next day. Because one day, all the work you've been doing has accumulated in the world of your file of, in life. And God just pushes the button one day and says, now the floodgates get open for that one. The Lord spoke a prophetic series and we're coming out with a book on it. And my dear pastor friend, Benjamin, I honor you. Thank you for inviting, uh, making this happen. And our pastor here, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you can prove yourself to be strong in your commitment and strong in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding... And power to move forward very aggressively and forcibly being obedient to God and being passionate and filled with passion about the mission that God has given you. Because everybody has a special talent and a special gift. If you can do that, there's no question that you will succeed. Lift your hands. I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach for a few moments here. I'm not going to preach all kinds of sugar blessings on you, cake and ice cream, because I think other people have done that, and maybe sometimes it's, it's not very appropriate. Really what we need is we ask God for his big picture, his big mission, yes? And now he's going to send his servant to teach us on how it's going to happen. Because if you don't know how it's going to happen and you keep going one day to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, doing the same thing, and maybe the thing you're doing is not the best thing to be doing, you're not going to succeed in any big way. But God has your success on his mind. Can you say amen? You're very quiet. Am I in the right place? Are you sure? Thank you very much. I thought so much about success, I've written several books about it. And God has given me revelation about it. Our life is supposed to be a, a flaming success, a glorious success. Everything we touch prospers. <clears throat> Everything we do increases for the better. Everything that we get involved in gets blessed because of the hand of God that's upon us. And that it's in itself is also no accident. Nothing happens by itself. Write that down somewhere. Nothing happens by itself. You can't do anything good by yourself alone. You could do some things, like Elijah. He was by himself as the prophet. He did a lot of great things, but he also then had a company of people later on too. 
when his successor Elisha began to organize the school of the prophets. They had the school of the prophets. They had other people. They were flowing. They had communities. But really, the great exploits of Elijah were those that were done by himself under the hand of God. However, it was sad for Elijah the day that the attack and the backlash came and he didn't have a friend to help him. So God sent an angel. Lift your hands. The Lord will always take care of his servant. He, he didn't have any person, but the Lord sent an angel to uh, And then even to uh, remove the tree that he was sitting under complaining because the Lord wanted him to get up and move. So the angel touched the tree and said, this tree will provide shade for you no more. Elijah, get up and walk to the next place. And then God said, go to Zarephath because I have someone to help you there. There's always a movement that comes. Life is about movement. Success is about movement. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? One lady there. I see one lady. You, you're alive. The rest kind of look like you. If you don't have anybody teaching you these kind of things in the pulpit, I'm only here for a few minutes and I'm going to another meeting. This is it. But if you don't have anybody teaching you these kind of things in your life, you know, you're in, you're in a bad position because church is a place of training for reigning. And say, Lord, help me to go to work. Not something that I'm a slave at, but something that I'm good at doing. Something I would love to do. Something I want to wake up early and go to sleep late every single day. Not six days a week. But seven days a week, I'll be happy to do your work. And I know that you will reward me and bless me for doing it. <clears throat> now, I'm like a bridge. I'm like a bridge builder. I'm going to take you from here to there and put you in a place where you can work correctly from today. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Say, Father, position me. I'm telling you, I feel in 10 minutes, if I just did this and told you these things, if you can remember and pray yourself with what I've told you from the Lord, your life will change this week and never go back again. And some people walk through life, as I'm saying, I really feel compassion. I really feel sad about it. I found this suit. It was sent to me from Europe. I call it my archbishop suit. Is it okay? It's my archbishop suit. My archbishop friend, he wears, he wears this kind of pattern, you know. I know the pants are a little long. I got my Nike Air Max shoes. I didn't want to wear my Italian dress shoes. I just thought these are comfortable because when I walk, they go... They, 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 you know, very comfortable. They, like, move under your feet. I bought these in New York City. I had to go to the main headquarters of Nike to find them. In fact, they have a big uh, thing on the wall, Just Do It, their logo, and I stood in front of it. I just found that picture today. I have to post it on the social media. Just Do It. That's a word, that's a powerful logo from a bunch of heathens. The Nike company, yeah? They're not, they're not going to church, they're not in church, but they came up with this saying, just do it. Oh, it's so powerful. I could take that and turn it into a message here. Just do, and it, listen, it's even in the Bible. In John chapter 2, Jesus' mom said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. <laughs> so these people in the world are making billions of dollars off of God's statement. And you in the church, what are you doing? Hoping to survive. Listening to preachers and singers making noise at you and not teaching you anything. God forbid. From today, 
I declare in this nation, across this land, that God's going to raise people to teach the people principles of truth, principles of business, principles of success. If you want, amen, Pastor Stanley, if you want the best success manual on planet Earth, it's right here. His men, his servants, his people, against devils and wicked situations, even God when he got mad at them, even judgment, and they came through. It's the greatest success book of all time. By the way, the Bible is the bestseller of all time. This book is the best-selling book in, in, in the history of the universe. Lift your hands. There's no better book than this book. There's no other religion that has a book that's better than this book. There's no other religion that has a book that sold more copies than this one. This is the champion of books. And the principles of success are all in there. Now, what you need is a person who really prays and asks God for wisdom. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now while we're here. Ask God for his wisdom. Father, flood my mind with your wisdom. Flood my heart with your wisdom. Let me have knowledge and understanding of your counsel and your truth that I can teach and flow and, and prosper in, in the ways of life, in the biggest ways. In Jesus' name. These are the kind of prayers you need to pray for yourself. Let me tell you the first person you need to pray for. Not the president. <laughs> you could pray for him, but you need to pray for yourself. Not the deputy president, so we could pray, we're praying for him, but you can pray for yourself. Lay your hands on yourself say, I need to pray for myself. Let me tell you, God didn't make you responsible for anybody else. He made you responsible for yourself. The, the assignment you have on earth is you. First you, then everybody else. Some people would think that that seems backward. Like, aren't I supposed to care about the world? Yeah, of course. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. But what is, what is included in the kingdom? My life becoming fruitful and productive. There's a, there's a scripture in the Song of Solomon that Solomon wrote. He talked about this woman who's dark, the dark, lovely lady. You know, she's an African woman, yes? Dark, and she said, dark-skinned, and she said, she even said about herself, I'm very dark-skinned. Why did she say that? Any interest, interesting, right? And she said... I've been made the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I've not kept. This is, a, this is heavy now. We need to take care of our own vineyard. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, Lord, my life, I'm responsible for it. I'm not responsible for everybody else. I can try to help as many people as I can. And basically, the more I get myself in good order then I'll be able to help everybody else. It sounds uh, interesting, but it's true. So look at, your, look at the person next to you and say, look at the person next to you right now and say, hey, how are you doing? How's your life? Uh, a lot of us would say, I have a lot of needs. <laughs> You know, some, you ever see people that are just happy no matter what's going on? I don't, I don't always understand that, you know? I don't always understand that too well. I, I think happiness is based on happenings. Happenings are good, happiness is mine. Happenings are not good, I don't feel so good about it. You ever see people that have joy no matter what happens? I don't, I, I love those, I admire those people, but I don't know if I always feel that like that. I'm always looking at what could be better. I received a prophecy many years ago that I'm a perfectionist. It's true, you know, for the kingdom of God. It's true. I look at everything. By the way, 
I can look at everything and know everything about everything. You don't know that about me. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't say nothing. I just observe something. Uh, give me a little bit of volume. Without the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8.10. And uh, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, right? But we also need to be a realist as well as a spiritual person. You ever see some people, nothing seems to bother them. They're just happy all the time, no matter what. Oh, I think I need some of those people around because they balance me out. But I myself could be looking at everything. I'll know what's missing. I'll know what's there. I won't maybe tell you, but I don't underestimate me. I, I'm aware of everything. But there are a lot of things that I don't need to be doing myself. Other people need to be taking care of those things. Because we're supposed to be managing the big things, not the, uh, the small issues. So you want to succeed, you have to first get the vision, number one. You need to know what to be doing with your life. What is the actual call of God? What is the actual a, a specific assignment that God has given you to do? That's number one. Then after that, you need to remember that the devil is defeated. Amen. Then after that, you see, the devil always gets a lot of amens and applause. You, you check yourself. Stop, stop pumping the devil. He's an idiot. He's defeated. He's the stupidest person that ever walked on the planet Earth. He was thrown to the earth. He didn't even want to come here. Don't shout. Well, you tell the devil is defeated. Everybody just goes, ah. And you talk about, you know, work and success and how to apply yourself. You're you quiet. Yeah. Someone goes, yeah, hey, the devil. And, ah, you woke up. What's wrong with you? You got your, your theology, is your doctrine is off. The doctrine of Christ is that the devil is defeated. Can you say amen? amen. He's not in my body. He's not in my house. He's not in my company. He's under my feet. And when I walk with these, even when I step on him, I feel comfort because the shoes move when I walk. They move with me. But he's right down there. Underneath. How stupid do you have to be to rebel against God and lose the battle? And God says forever, you're thrown away. And the scripture says, is this the one that deceived the nations? Look at this pathetic thing. And then the Lord will take him and throw him into hellfire. Ha. The devil's not in hell. He's on the earth. The Holy Spirit is not in heaven. He's on the earth. The angels of God are in both places. And God the Father and Jesus are in the third heaven. But the Holy Ghost and the devil, they're on the earth. They're on the planet earth. But the day will come when the, the door will open and the angels will throw Satan down into hell. And he won't be a big commander-in-chief there. He's going to be the one tormented by the flames and without remedy. So you want to acknowledge him and think he's a good guy or he's okay or he's some powerful being? He's not. Understand that, please. Get that in your doctrine. The devil, you just ignore him. Ignore him. Someone said, oh, the devil showed up to do something. What devil? What devil? Which devil? Which one? Who are they anyway? You know, if a devil starts manifesting, you don't talk to him. You go, shut up and come out. Amen. Yamaza, Kwendo Uko, Tokahapa. I'm not going to listen to you. Oh, it's so sad that people get full of demons. But it's our job to cast them out. Praise the Lord. So, number two, know that the devil's defeated. Number three, you need to understand that uh, you need help. Lift your hands and say, I need help. From good resources, good people, good situations. I need other things in my life to help me succeed. I can't do it by myself. Then... Number four, I need to take the action plan 
specifically based on God's instructions on what he wants me to do. And number five, I will fulfill my destiny as I walk powerfully in obedience to the leading of his spirit. The Lord said, I will lead you and guide you. I'll be your teacher. Look at the Gospels of the Gospel of John, the Apostle John, 14, 15, and 16. I will be your teacher, your guide, your intercessor, your advocate, which means like your lawyer, your attorney. I'll be your helper. Amen. I'll be your intercessor. I'll stand in the gap for you. I'll be your teacher, and I'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, will lead us and guide us into all truth. Lift your hands, say, Holy Ghost, I want to be your friend. Please be my best friend from today. Correct me. Direct me. Change things for the better for me. Remove every wrong. I feel the anointing. Remove every... It's like right now. It's like fire is just hitting, hitting me. I'm just falling here. And remove every wrong person from me. Remove every wrong thing out of my world. Any witchcraft. Any wrong person. Any wrong agenda. Any person that's blocking the flow. Any person that has no desire to help. Any person that has no desire to grow. They have to go. In Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, for the best of everything. The best of 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 the best. Anything that's on the earth is mine. The best of everything. My own jet, my own helicopter, my own properties, my own buildings, my own vacation homes, my own systems of operations, my own enterprises and companies in many nations of the world. My own people all over the planet. My airwaves going everywhere. My voice going to billions, not even millions, but billions of people in, in 200 countries of the world. And I need the help for that, Lord. The help, 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 the help. The best vehicles, the best friends, the best people, the best wisdom, the most knowledgeable staff, the most brilliant people that know how to do everything good. People that have creativity and brilliance and knowledge and understanding. And they do things according to the wisdom of God. These are the kind of things we need. It's all the other things that just block the flow. People that have no desire to learn or to grow. And uh, God says they have to go. You can't be in the midst of a bunch of foolishness and expect to be wise. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says the companion of fools will be destroyed but the wise will walk with the wise and become wiser. So you have an obligation based on that verse to find brilliant people to walk with as your friends. It's been said, thank you, Lord. Yes, I see it. It's been said that, yeah, Lord. Mm, that's right. It's been said yeah, uh-huh. I, I hear you, Lord. I hear you. Yes, I really... Uh, help me please to understand this so deeply, this, these things you're telling me right now. I, some things I'll say, some things I won't say. The Lord's telling me a few things right now. Wow. Krishna renta sakalahayati sukodeyataya. Marendala shayatala. But the, it's been said... I'll say this one part of it. It's been said that the people around you, the level that they get to will also be your level. So you always want to reach for higher people. I, I saw a man, uh, I remember his name, Mark, is Mark something. I won't say his name, the rest of his name. But he, uh, Lemon, Lemon with another two letters at the end, Lemon something. And I had heard of him before. But he said, he was asked by this kid, how did you become so successful in business? And... He said, what's the most amount of money you've made in a single year? He said, $980 million. In one year, he made almost a billion dollars. One billion dollars. U.S. dollars. Not shillings. Not willings. Not hope so. Not I, I desire or I hope that maybe one day. Cash money. USD. 
almost $1 billion in one year. How did you do it? He said, I found people smarter than myself, and I surrounded myself with them. And I didn't take just yes men. I took people that would, were able to talk to me and tell me no when something wasn't right. And tell me, think again, please, we got to go this way and be demanding. And he said he followed the council. He had a, a, a people around him like that. Now, let me tell you something. That's not a license to be rude to a leader. You don't go up to a leader and start telling them off and you know this and that. I, he, the leader would look at you and go like, what? You talk to me like that. There's the door. <laughs> Who's the boss here? They, they talk to me like that. But people that have wisdom to know how to do things. Myself, a as a leader, do I have to know how to do every single thing that needs to be done? No, of course not. Do I need people that know how to do things in brilliance? Yes. More than I can even describe. Lift your hands. This is a prophetic message because I'm the whole thing I'm prophesying here. And not just to you, but to myself as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know you're happy I came, but I'm happy too. Because I'm, I'm hearing all this from God and I'm speaking it forth. It will all come to pass. We need people that are brilliant. We need road signs to go faster, not roadblocks. <laughs> we need helpers, not hindrances. Hello. We need blessings, not blockers. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. I took a bunch of people and I put them outside. I said, I can't take it anymore. And I'm, I'm really on that mission. So if you want to walk with me, word to the wise, counsel to a wise person, if you're wise. If not, you'll, you won't make it. You ask them something, they always have an answer. You ever, you ever ask someone a question, they always have an answer? Oh, well, it's this like this. I already know that, dummy. Tell me something I don't know. Hello? Help me understand why it was wrong. And help me please have hope for tomorrow that it's going to be better next time. Lift your hands. That's, that's the way we need to talk. They're like, well, you know, the thing was like that. And I know. I saw it. It's, it wasn't right. The only reason I brought it up is to correct it, not to talk. If you think a busy person has just all kinds of time to just talk, 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 talk about something, you're very mistaken. We don't bring up issues to talk about them. We bring up issues to solve the problem. Hello. And when there's a conversation, hello. And when a conversation's going on, we're looking for the answer. So like I ask a person a question. They don't tell me nothing. I say, hey, what happened? Uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh. I'm like, really? And you want money for this answer? You expect money to tell me this? Uh, 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 uh. And what am I supposed to do with that? So tell me in 10 seconds, I did this, I did this, this got done, this got done, this is there, this is pending, this is going, this is going to be next, I'm going to do it, this is what happened, this is how I fix this. I'm like, go, hallelujah. That's all I wanted. Too much to ask for some people maybe. I'm telling you, you got to watch out for people, man. People can be your greatest blessing or the greatest curse. Lift your hands. I prophesy right now that the wrong people, they just, I've just put up, I put it out in the spirit. And, and I'm not being harsh or, or demanding or anything like that. I'm just saying what God has uh, allotted us time to do, we have to get done. You know what? I'm, I'm walking up here. I'm feeling a little tired, you know? I'm doing a lot of things, you know? I'm feeling a little physical wear and tear. But how much time do we really have anyway? We need to redeem the time now, you know? Some things I'm doing now, I wish I'd, 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 got, I'd done 20 years ago. Some things I did 20 years ago, I wish I did 20 years before that. You think we have endless time. And you, maybe you're, you're a younger person. So you don't care about time. You don't care about, you're just there, oh, whatever happens, happens, whatever I, I'm, 
I'm just going to get something from this, and that's it. You don't care about the mission. You don't care about the vision. Uh, and, and again, not to be sound dem too demanding, but you're supposed to show zeal to God. Not, not for a person. Hello. Lift your hands. Not for a person, but for the church of Jesus Christ, for the power of God, for the glory of God. You're supposed to feel some zeal of the Lord for something to be done very well in his name. I told you about preachers that stand up and glorify the devil. Then they say in Jesus' name. Which gospel are you preaching? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the ends of the world, and then the end will come. The gospel of the kingdom is what? That we have total victory. Jesus is Lord, and he's my Savior and King. He's the Savior of the world. Every devil's going to be cut down and cut off. Every soul is going to be saved. Everybody's going to be redeemed that's not redeemed. Everybody, everything's going to change for the better. This is our world. It's not the devil's world. Lift your hands. He's called the God of this world, yeah, because he usurped authority, but the church is supposed to be putting him down every step of the way. That's the gospel of the kingdom. That's the doctrine of the kingdom. Third John 2, write it down, the book of Third John. Beloved, that's me, Thomas, I wrote my name there. There's a space there from the last chapter. There's some white space above the third John. And the Lord spoke to me many, many years ago and said, write your name there. I said, yeah, Thomas Matt. I wrote my full name, all my names, my middle names, everything. My full names. Thomas mm, mm, Manton the fourth. Beloved me, I wish, pray, and desire... That's King James, New King James, and New International Version. Wish, pray, desire. Above everything else, that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Let me tell you, the devil and his ugly friends and the blockers, not the blessings, the limiters, not the limitless, the hinderers, not the helpers, their job is to stop you from that. Hello? Prosperity, health, and well-being of your soul. If those are not going well in your daily life, something is wrong in the cake factory. There's some wrong ingredients in the cake. Take the cake and throw it out the window and call somebody in that knows how to make a cake. Find someone that can make the cake. The favorite food you have, find somebody that can make it. Oh. How you want things to flow in a day, please find somebody who can help you. Lift your hands. Father, I, this, is, this is a painful prayer. It's a painful prayer. Sometimes, many times, even me, my blessed self, we don't know how to find these people. But you do. So in this prophetic uh, message, sermon, teaching, one big prophecy, whatever you want to call this, uh, wisdom, success, teaching, as long with some prophetic edge on it. Father, in Jesus' name, find our good people today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Sunday so that tomorrow they begin to show up. Amen. They find us and we find them. Amen. We cannot live without the best of help Amen. in every area of life. Amen. In Jesus' name, it is done Amen. right now according to my word. Amen. And... Because we need to do what, what John the Apostle said. Hello? Are you learning anything? This gospel of the kingdom can be summed up pretty much in one in, in, in the Apostle John's decree in 3 John verse 2. Not the, God, not the book of John, but the epistle of John. The third one. He has five. Small little books further on toward the book of Revelation. The epistles of John. The one who was with Jesus very closely. He said you should prosper. 
you should be in good health, and even as your soul prospers. That covers the whole gospel. Right there. Find that in your Bible or write it down somewhere. Third John. And read the whole, the whole, the whole epistle of Third John because it's, it's a good little book. There's more verses that are good. Three John, three John, third John. So whatever is anti-prosperity, whatever is against our health, whatever is against our peace of mind and our well-being and our soul is of the devil and his friends. Now someone may not willingly be the friend of the devil. You may ask them, are you a, are you a servant of the devil? They say, no, <laughs> I love Jesus. Yeah, but you're not doing anything good to help Jesus. Huh? You're not helping him enough. You're not helping me enough. So instead of being the great helper, you're a great hindrance. And this is not okay. Father, let conviction of the Holy Ghost go on every person hearing this message and everybody that this would apply to, that they understand that they need to work and order themselves correctly, that we can also prosper and have great health. Do you know, there's some things that you need prosperity for just to take care of your health. You need a good holiday, you need good food, you need good nourishment. Not flipping ugali, uh, unga. Jesus, you eat unga, it'll kill you. Unga, take a bag of unga, just pour it like this in your mouth, you'll choke to death. Unga, I got my bag of unga. So you can make something to put in your stomach to survive. I like chapatis. I like mandazis. No problem. Hakuna shida, eh? Yeah, but that's not, that's not health food, man. You need, you need to grow vegetables, man. You need fruits. You need vitamins, yeah? You need nutrients. You need, and there's things that people can take for their health that are very expensive to order them. Like shilajit from the Himalayas. Like sea moss from the, from the sea. Like things full of the multivitamins, the omegas from the, from the salmon, the fish oil. And all of these things, when you put them in, the, in your body, they begin to work in your systems of the, of, the, of the health. It costs money. Somebody could see a price of one of those things and say, I can't buy that in my lifetime. What if something costs 10,000 shillings just to buy? And then you got to pay the importation fee. Let's say something's going to cost you to get something good, two, three hundred dollars which is going to be like $100 is 13K, right? 26.39, so 40K. Let's say it's going to cost you 40,000 shillings to buy a box of something that's going to help you. You may never do it because you think that's even higher than your rent. So what? Money is for our well-being. Lift your hands. Money is to be used for our well-being. Money is to be used for everything good for us. And then there's things you need to do in a higher realm, in the realm of business and all that. And you need people to help you. You, you need money. You need capital. You need operations cash. You need money to flow. Where is it? Where is it? You could be having an enterprise going and you make no money. Why? Because something's wrong with the environment. Something's wrong somewhere lift your hands and let's pray i'm going to stop in about two minutes and we'll continue this later father i thank you <clears throat> for the best of the best of the best if i said it 150 times it wouldn't be enough i still want to say it another 500 times best 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 b-e-s-t 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 I'm writing a book. I got a revelation. I preached a whole series on this called The Best of the Best. And the, uh, the acronym for that is T-B-O-T-B, -T -B, The Best of the Best. Of what? Of everything. You want relationships? Have the best ones. You want... Friends have the best ones. You want business associates have the best ones. You want good people in your world have courageous, integrity people. The best ones. 
You want food, have the best. You want house, have the best. You want car, have the best. How many need a car? You don't have a car. Lift your hands to me right now. I prof yeah, like everybody. Oh, my God. Really? You come on this street here, you can't, there's nowhere to park. They don't care because very few people have cars anyway. What did uh, Mwai Kibaki, our friend, call the walking nation? Kenya, the walking nation, not the working nation, the walking nation. Everybody's walking. It's not, nothing like a Kenyan woman with those big shoes that you, got, you ladies wear. You know that big with the flat heels? You know them shoes you get and you have flat heels here and you, you walk like this? I watch. A Kenyan woman walking like that. You got strong legs, man. Your ankles and your... All around here. Very strong. You can walk like a, like a lamb, like a goat. On the side of the rock, you won't fall. It doesn't matter how many holes are in the road. You know how to avoid them, even at night. I was in Maasai land. There's no light. There's no electricity for miles. It's black dark in the night. I'm like, how do you see? They say, we're used. We're used. That's what I say. We're used. We're used. Used to it. You see an elephant coming. You see a lion coming. You know how to hide or... <laughs> I was preaching and prophesying in Messiah land and the elephants came by one day and crushed their little houses down. I said they did it right here? Yeah, they walked right here and broke all the houses down. And they just said, Makuna Matata, we'll build another one. No problem. They're happy. They smile at you like this. Their ears are going like this. You know the ones with the long ears? When they move, their ears go whew, like my hair. Their ears go like my hair. <clears throat> no problem. Very strong. Very skinny, but very strong. Wonderful. I love it. But my God. So that's one good way of looking at the situation. You have very strong legs. Lift your hands. You can walk anywhere and not be defeated. Amen. You could be outside anywhere. You won't cry. You'll just make it home. No big deal. Amen. To us Americans, we're more spoiled, you know? We need a car. We need air conditioning. We, need... we can't be out like that everywhere. Lift your hands. Say, Father, thank God for preserving me. And thank God that all my walking made me very strong legs. <laughs> and my ankles, the tendons and the ligaments, you know, the, the joint, the connecting tissues that go from the ankles down into the feet, bones, very strong. That's good. But there's a better way. Lift your hands. When you can use the foot, <laughs> the right foot, <laughs> Instead of walking, you push the pedal, accelerator and brake, and the four wheels take you fast somewhere. Come on, somebody. Come on, give Jesus a clap and a praise right now. <laughs> That's wisdom. <laughs> I prophesy, Lord, that everybody's going to get cars. <laughs> they can get a car. Someone could give them a car. They'll find a car. A car will find them. And they'll be driving, driving, driving their car. Tint the windows. Put on good music. Praise the Lord. And enjoy your space. Lift your hands if you receive the prophecy. I said this. Life is half as difficult when you have a good vehicle calling even now you have bolt what did you do before bolt what did you do before bolt you had to go on the matatus if you're from Mero, you say the montantus montantus the bonzes buses bonzes 
In Meru's, they put an N in front of everything. I asked this Meru lady, what day are you coming to town? She said, on Tuesday. Then I said, what about Thursday? She says, okay, Thursday. How about Friday? Okay, frying day, frying day. Yeah. And what did you do? So now you have both, right? But still, you're with some stinking person. You don't know what they are. You, some of them are full of the devil. I've seen some. And you have to sit like you're a guest when you're paying for the service and you feel all nervous. Get into your own car. It's a different world. Praise the Lord. And if you have a driver, get a driver if you want. If the driver doesn't flow well, find another one. It's okay. But make your space, your, your, your place, your space. That you feel relaxed. Amen. That you want to go somewhere. You could go many places in a day. I didn't plan to say this. This is the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands right now. I didn't plan to say anything really. It's just the Holy Ghost. That's how I preach. I preach without notes. If I share scriptures, I could share a hundred scriptures standing here. I don't have to turn. I saw one in the beginning about the law of the Nazarite. I opened up with serious covenant consecration. I want to... I started there, I want to end there. You got to prove yourself to God that you're willing to be separated for him. You know, the Nazarites, they never cut their hair. People ask me, are you a Nazarite? I, what is that? No, I'm from New York. Are you a Nazarite? Is that why you have long hair? You take the vow of a Nazarite? I never even thought of it. <laughs> I'm from New York City. Praise the Lord. I just let it grow, and God did the rest. <sighs> serious about the work. Let's bow our heads and pray. Just pray seriously right now for 30 seconds, one minute. And commit yourself to the Lord. If you don't know Jesus yet as your Savior... Pray these words, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior right now. I thank you for forgiving me of sin. I want to be in your family. Thank you for your resurrection life. Thank you for the gift of salvation, Lord. I receive it now in Jesus' name. I believe you died and rose again on the third day. And you are the King of Kings and you are my king now and my savior. And I thank you that I'm now in your family by praying this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to write me a message and tell me that you prayed the prayer. And also I have the prayer of salvation in all of my books. In fact, until Jesus comes or I'm gone, at this point we don't know which is going to come first. But I'm going to be here for a long time, but Jesus may be coming one of these fine days. Here it is. May I invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And I have three pages about the plan of salvation and then the prayer to pray. I think this book, actually, I found a mistake that I got very disturbed about. If it's not this, I, I saw one that had the story, but it didn't have the prayer. This is one. Feel free to contact our ministry to pray. A prayer request. No, I want the prayer of salvation. When we go to reprint, we need to add that. This one got off the printing without that, but uh, praise the Lord. Now, a lot of people say, I'm saved. Yes? How many say, I'm saved? I'm truly saved. Let me see your hand. You say, I'm born again. I know I am. I myself, I am I'm born again. Myself, I'm very born again. <laughs> I'm born again a million times over. Praise the Lord. I've prayed the sinner's prayer in my life so many times, I can't even tell you. Praise the Lord. I lost count. Many times when there's a prayer going for salvation, I pray the prayer. 
You say you're already saved. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I want to talk to Jesus today and tell him I love him. Lift your hands. Nothing wrong with praying the prayer again. If someone says, calls people forward to be saved and they lead everybody in the prayer. Pray the prayer again. Why not? Instead of standing there like, I'm already saved. I'm not like these people. Don't be like those Pharisees that the Lord said, you're proud and arrogant. You think, you, you think you're okay. You know, in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus spoke to the churches and he told them the problem he had with some of them. Some of them said, you lost, your, you lost your first love. Some of them said, you started well, but now you're not doing so well. But let's be very careful to always be humble before the Lord. Lift your hands. But even us who are born again, let us pray right now to commit ourselves to the Lord and become closer to him and his purpose. Fix that ring a little bit. In Jesus' name, lift your hands. Rashakarate. Shalate. And let's pray this like, like the vow of the Nazarite. Let's pray like the vow of Job. I'll serve you. I know my Redeemer, Job 9.25. I know my Redeemer will stand upon the earth. I know that there's a time coming when salvation is coming in light of all the problems we're seeing. He had hope for the future. Like... Any man of God or woman of God of old. When Hannah prayed in Samuel chapter 1, she said, or was it Samuel 1 or 2? 1 Samuel 1 or 1 Samuel 2. She prayed the prayer. She said, God, I need a son. And if you give me a son, I'll give him to you. And God answered her, her cry. She fasted and prayed. She cried with a pure heart, and God gave her the greatest prophet of their generation. The prophet Samuel came from her. She was barren, and she cried to God, and God gave her the biggest blessing that any woman could ever have. Lift your hands. This is what seriousness does. God could give us something we never had before. That's so big that we never deserved by ourselves. I feel the anointing. Rashakata. Shalabahate Something that God adds to us because of our faithfulness to Him. Never be cold toward the Lord. Never look at your problems as the state of life for yourself. Always look up. Psalm 121 says, look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. And he went on to say, he went on to say, he's not asleep concerning Israel. He's not asleep concerning us. Feel that. Feel the Holy Ghost. Something you never would get any other way. It's just by your serious passion for the Lord. And he adds something to you. Something you would have lived your whole life without and never have known the power of the blessing of the thing that comes from heaven because it was never given to you. God can see your prayer. If you think that's not real in any way, look at who I just mentioned. Hannah prayed and she, God gave her Samuel. Look at Mary. She walked by herself, a virgin girl. And the angel Gabriel was sent to her. She didn't know it was coming. Look at uh, Moses. He was brought up in the house of Pharaoh. And then he was brought out to the wilderness. And then God brought him back to be the deliverer. He didn't know all that was going to happen. But he proved himself along the way. Look at Elijah the Tishbite. Came from nowhere. What happened to him? The hand of God came upon him. What happened to him? The hand of God came upon him. The hand of God can come upon you and give you something you never bargained for. Give you something no man could ever give you. Give you something from heaven, a power, a supernatural miracle anointing, a supernatural blessing to make you rich and add no sorrow with it. You never could have had it by yourself. By the mercy and the grace and the favor of God as payment for your faithfulness. As reward for your faithfulness. Let's pray right now.
Begin to pray. I'm done. I'm finished. I have no energy to take out. Let's pray. Let's pray. I'm pushing people. I, I refuse. I've spoken. You've heard my words. Now you respond in Jesus' name. In fact, I'm going to walk off the platform. We're going to pray for a minute. The pastors will come and take it, take it further. The books, you can talk about the books. You can talk about the offering and uh, make sure you have my envelope for me. We're ready to go. In a few minutes, I have to get across to the other side of the city for my next meeting. Make sure you bless me before I go. The Lord wants to hear back from you now. You want to stand up? You want to get on your knees? You don't have to get on your knees. I'm not like that. I'm not going get on your knees. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But let's re respond. Respond. The, the voice of the Lord is speaking. Respond. Respond to him, not to me. To him. The prophet speaks. It's not a joke. It's not like a, a, another nice teaching or a message along the way or something the man wanted to say or something someone wanted to talk about. No, this is from the Holy Ghost. 100% from the Holy Ghost, this whole entire message from beginning to end. The last service, everything I said, I went into things about politics and elections and, I, oh my God, when do I talk about that? That was from the whole, you notice in this service, I didn't even mention it once. I told you I won't repeat it. It's, it came from heaven, it was done, now we go to the next and it's going to be something else. <sighs> from the Holy Ghost. If you remember anything about me, Thomas Manton IV, know this. My ministry is extremely supernatural. Every time I speak, the Lord gives me a word. And sometimes he doesn't give me the word in advance. I just take the mic and the, and the spirit of the Lord begins to speak. He takes me over and he begins to speak. Oh, yes. And sometimes the Lord will give me a statement or I'll find something in the scripture. Very on the spot. Minutes or seconds before I'm about to go live or go on the, the, the pulpit or whatever. And boom! And there it comes. Respond back. You people are very quiet. I wonder if the Lord is going to come this way like he did and just keep moving. And stop at the next church or the next church or the next. There's three. Or that place across there, whatever that place is over there. Don't let them pass you by. Don't let him pass you by. Respond to him. Because he wants to give gifts to men. Father, we receive what you said. I receive myself what you said. Thank you, Lord, for empowering us to go to the next dimensions of life, the, the dimensions in the kingdom, and gifts and powers from heaven and blessings from you, and businesses and enterprises and wealth and generations of wealth and treasures from the earth and people, the best of people that we, we never knew how to find them. They'll find us. The best of 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 everything available that's for us we we take it now we receive it now in the mighty and matchless name of jesus christ of nazareth the son of the living god alpha and omega beginning in the end faithful amen and true bishop and overseer of our souls king of kings lord of lords day star day spring <coughs> amen faithful and true the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Mighty One, the Mighty Warrior, the Bread of Life, the Great Shepherd, the Resurrection and the Life, the One who began a good work in us, He'll complete it. The One who began a good work in us, He'll work on it. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the One who knows the end from the beginning. Thank you, Lord that we are those candidates for your blessings. Heal us right now. Healing from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. New eyes, new lungs, new heart, new organs, new internal organs, rejuvenation of the flesh from head to toe, perfect health, any malfunction in the body, let it be gone in Jesus' name from us. 
from this very second and hour right now this very second and moment right now in the name of Jesus new body parts new things that we need and want new help new money new houses new lands new vehicles new transportation new open doors new friends new mechanisms of operations new wisdom new knowledge new understanding new operations the best of everything the best of everything the best of everything the best of everyone the best of everyone the best of people the best of resources the greatest that are on the earth will be ours as gifts from you we receive the gifts and father the supernatural deposits of new anointings mantles of falling new mantles burning fire from heaven that god wants to put in the life of a person we receive it right now in the name of jesus we give your name all the praise in jesus name amen god bless you brethren in psalms 119 105 the bible says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path truly god has sent prophet dr thomas manton the fourth to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations thus brothers and sisters in christ i urge you just as the bible says in matthew 10 41 whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.